Now Ramanujacharya, he was one of the great saints who taught the art of worshipping Lakshmi Narayan with a pure heart. And his saintly qualities are so much worshipped and honored by all of us that we decided to have this annual day for Lakshmi Narayan on the appearance day of Sri Ramanujacharya. I'll only speak a few minutes this evening, and Chandramali Swami Maharaj will also speak. But I'll, exp I'll tell one story about Sripad Ramanujacharya. Of the quality of devotion that he encouraged and inspired from his devotees. And through his devotees, he was teaching the whole world what are the values that are sacred in human life that really connect us to God. There was a relative of Ramanujacharya, like a cousin, named Dasarathi who was one of the most learned scholars of the scripture in all the land. He had such a brilliant intelligence, a mastery over the conclusions of the scriptures. And he was a disciple of Sri Ramanujacharya. He was very, very well known for his ability to present spellbinding classes to defeat opposition in all sorts of debate. He was also from a very, very high caste of Brahmin family, highly recognized person. Dasarati asked his Guru Dev Ramanujacharya please explain to me the true purport of the essence of Bhagavad Gita in the form of the verse Sarva Dharman Bharityajya Mam Ekam Sharanam Braja Aham Tvam Sarva Papebyo Moksha Yishamima Sucha The translation is abandon all varieties of Dharma and just surrender to me I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. This is the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita, the very essence of the Gita. Dasarati wanted to know the confidential meaning of this verse. Ramanujacharya said, this is a very high topic. I think it would be more appropriate for Gosti Purna to explain it to you. He is a very highly realized soul. He knows the scriptures thoroughly with realization. Go to him and he will explain this verse to you. So the Asarati walked all the way to the town where Gostipurna was residing, he asked him, can you explain this verse to me? He says, you come, you stay here and you sit in my classes. He sat at the feet of his guru, our Gostipurna, and he was rendering service and sitting and listening and listening. Six months passed. And Gostipurna never said anything about this verse from Bhagavad Gita. Six months. So, finally, after that time passed, Gostipurna said, actually, you should know 
what it means to understand the scripture. I know who you are. You are a brilliant intellect. You are a very famous, sought-after scholar. But beware. Because high birth, wealth, beauty, scholarship can very easily bring pride, arrogance. That arrogance will spoil everything. A person who is actually virtuous, the more they become learned, the more they become humble, respectful to others, and develop divine qualities that will please the Lord. But for small people, too much education and these other things simply make them arrogant which is nothing but a blemish on your character in the eyes of God. So now that I have told you this warning, now go back to your guru, Ramanujacharya, and ask him to explain the meaning of this verse. So he went back to Ramanujacharya. And he said, this is what Gostipurna Maharaj told me. So please, if you see I'm fit, Explain to me, what is the meaning of the essence of the Gita? At that time, Ramanujacharya, the person who gave him his initiation, Mahapurna, his guru, Mahapurna's daughter, Atulai, she happened to come before Ramanujacharya and she was in a really desperate condition. Ramanujacharya said, please tell me, what is the problem? She said, I got married to this family and they just make me do such hard work. I just can't do it. Every day, several times a day, I have to walk two kilometers to a well, which is the only source of water for the house. And I have to carry back and forth big clay jugs of water on my head or on my shoulder. And it's exhausting me. My health is getting depleted. I just don't have the stamina to do this type of work. And when I'm not carrying water, I have to cook and cook and cook. And I'm in so much exhaustion. There's no help. And when I tell my mother-in-law about how much I'm suffering, she screams at me. She said, what useless person are you? You're supposed to be a daughter-in-law. You married into this family? Will you expect, why didn't you send a cook with you? Why didn't you send a water carrier with you? Do you expect us to supply these things? Don't be such a spoiled brat. Do your work and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> this is the history of mother-in-law. <laughs> At least that's what I've heard. <laughs> So Atulai was telling Ramanujacharya, I can't cope with it anymore. So I, 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 I had to, I was having breakdowns. So I returned to my father's house and told him everything that was happening. And he said, go to Ramanujacharya and explain everything to him and see what his advice may be. Shirata Gopinath. So she left it all to Ramanujacharya. Ramanujacharya. Dasarati had just come and said, Gostipurna sent him to back. And this girl came right at that moment. So Ramanujacharya pointed to Dasarati. He said, it's not a problem. Dasarati will go home with you 
and he will do all the cooking and he will carry all the water. <laughs> so he said, Dasarati, go with Atulai now and do all the menial services and anything else the mother-in-law expects of you, you must obey her. So here is one of the world's most renowned scholars, one of the most highly placed Brahmins, and he follows her home, and for the next six months, he's going back and forth to this well, carrying large quantities of water back for the mother-in-law. And he's doing all the cooking for the family and all the cleaning and all the menial services. And without any complaint, because it was his guru's order. For him, it was as good as studying the scripture. For him, it was a sacred activity as performing yajyas. For Dasarati, this was as much an exalted opportunity to serve the Lord is giving lectures to 10,000 people. Krishna says in Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam says, Atapum birdvijastreshtas varana shrama vibhaga shashvan ushtatasya dharamasya samsadhir hari toshanam. That our success is to the extent we please God, Krishna by the sincerity of our actions, by the purity of our intentions, whether we're doing something that appears very exalted or doing something very simple, from a spiritual level, our success is that Krishna is pleased. Patram pushpam palam to yam yomi bhakta prayachchati and Krishna is pleased in whatever we do, if it is done with honest and sincere and humble devotion. So Dasarati, from the core of his heart, he was so grateful. Can you imagine a person so highly placed as a scholar, as a pundit, as a yajnik brahman, is carrying water, and on his hands and knees cooking for six months continuously. And Lord knows how much the mother-in-law chastised him. <laughs> but he was grateful. He was happy because he was doing the will of his guru. And one day when Dasarati, and he was, nobody knew who he was. Even the mother-in-law Nobody knew he was actually the great famous Dasarati. They just thought he was some menial worker. The whole town. He concealed his identity. Otherwise they wouldn't let him do these things. So one day, when like every other day, he was just carrying a big load of water <laughs> on his back for two kilometers from the well, he happened to hear one man speaking from the scripture. And he was misrepresenting the truth of the scripture. So Dasarati, he saw there was a large crowd of people listening and they were being misled. So when it came time for questions, Dasarati had the water on his back <laughs> And he said, actually, what you're saying, that's not right. And this, this preacher, this lecturer, was outraged. Who are you to question my teachings? I am Brahman. I am Pandit. I am a lecturer with disciples. And you? A menial Cook, a lowly water boy, carrying pots of water on your head, you have the audacity to challenge my teachings? 
Huh. What is your explanation? Dasarati, very humble, very respectful. He said, since you asked, I will tell you my explanations. And he explained. All those people were absolutely enthralled by his speech. In fact, even the teacher, he fell at Dasarati's feet and said, Every, I've never heard anything explained like you. How is it possible that a menial cook and water boy can speak these, this message like you? And everybody around was ready to be his disciple. And they said, who are you? He said, my name is Dasarati. <laughs> <laughs> you? You're the famous Dasarati? What are you doing carrying water? And what are you doing uh, cooking for this mother-in-law? <laughs> and this family. You shouldn't be doing this. You should be lecturing to thousands of people. You should be guiding the, the, the public. Dasarati said, no, no, this is exactly what I should be doing because my Guru Dev, Ramanujacharya, he has given me this service and I'm grateful, I'm honored to perform it. And they all said, well, we're going to, we're going to tell Ramanujacharya that you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> you, should, you should go back to Sri Rangam and be teaching people. So some of the people from the town, Dasarati said, I can't go. This is my service. I have to cook the next meal. <laughs> How can I go to Sri Rangam? So some of the townspeople went all the way to Sri Rangam and told Sri Ramanujacharya. And he was so happy. He was in ecstasy to hear about the genuine humility of his disciple the genuine service attitude of his disciple, how he was so grateful for any opportunity to serve. So they begged Ramanuja, that please give us your order and we will go and bring Dasarati back to you in Sri Rangam. And Sri Ramanujacharya said, I will personally go there with you because I want, to, I want the association of my dear disciple. He's pleased me so much. And here is the Acharya of, of the major part of all of India. He has tens and thousands, hundreds and thousands of disciples dozens of sannyasis. He's writing books that even today, almost a thousand years later, are still considered some of the greatest commentaries of the scriptures ever written and studied by millions of people today. He walked barefoot all the way back with these other towns, common townspeople. And Dasarati, when he saw Ramanuja, his guru, he fell at his feet and Ramanuja picked him up and embraced him. He said, come back with me. I'm so pleased with you. You have shown that you are actually fit to understand the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. And then Ramanujacharya explained to him the confidential meaning of Sarva Dharman Purityasya, Mame Kam Sharanam Vraja, Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Vyo Moksha Yishap The lesson that Sri Ramanujacharya taught is you cannot understand the spirit. or the essence of real knowledge, spiritual knowledge, simply by academic research or study. 
Keshava Kashmiri. He was one of the greatest Sanskrit scholars that ever lived. But he was proud. When he came before little Nimai, Nimai Pandit, Lord Chaitanya in Navadweep, Nimai crushed his pride. But he did it in such a respectful and such a gracious manner that although he crushed Keshav Kashmiri's pride, Keshav Kashmiri was not crushed. Only his pride was crushed. Because it was done with such respect and with such confidentiality also. And then when Lord Chaitanya explained the meaning of the scriptures that he knew so well, he could understand it because he had a humble heart. And there's that other story of Ramanuja's successor, Parasara Bhattar. During Ramanuja's time, Parasara was just a little boy. He was only five years old. And a great conquering scholar came to Sri Rangam. Now please understand, in those days, this is the, the 12th century. In India, nobody cared about cricket. <laughs> or football or ping pong the real the real sport was debate if you were a good debater you were they didn't have hoardings in those days but you would be on every advertisement in all of the land that was the sport that was the prestige and this man was the champion debater in the whole country. And he was coming in beautiful palaquin, being carried. And there were Brahmins chanting mantras and singing his glories and musical instruments and elephants and chariots. Wherever he went, he had this procession. And people honored him and respected him. But he was arrogant. And wherever he went, he would challenge. There is no question I cannot answer. If anyone dares to ask me a question, come forward. And you have to a question. If he answers it, he defeats you and you have to sign a certificate. So no, hardly anyone ever dared to ask him a question because they knew he was just so brilliant. But little Parasarabhatar he came up to him and he said, I have a question for you. Huh. <laughs> there's this very elderly, stately scholar and there's five-year-old boys coming to challenge him. He looked at this child with disdain. Don't waste my time. You're just a child. What do you know? Do you know who I am? And the child said, I have a question. I want you to answer my question. Just because you're big and I'm small, what does that mean? I have a question for you. Answer my question. So the man didn't defiance. He said, what is your question? And the little boy picked up a handful of sand and held it right in front of the pundit's face and said, Tell me immediately how many grains of sand are in my hand. <laughs> he never got a question like that. <laughs> the scholar was completely bewildered. He didn't know what to say. He just was speechless. First time in his life he was speechless. And then Parasara, the five-year-old boy, he said, all of your scholarship, all of your great learning, it's all, without humility and devotion, 
it is as worthless as worthless as this handful of sand and then he threw the sand in the ground and the scholar came off of his palanquin and fell at the feet of the 5 year old boy and with folded hands said you are my teacher i am your student I accept defeat from you. This was a five-year-old disciple of Ramanuja Acharya. So this is how he inculcated this spirit. Srila Prabhupada, our Guru Dev, he was asked by a PhD candidate, please tell me, what is your philosophy? and Shiva Prabhupada's reply he replied in different ways at different times he said philosophy without good character is practically meaningless and useless Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was talking about Kesha of Kashmiri he said a tree that has good fruits due to the weight of those fruits is always bowing down but a tree with no fruits is very upright similarly a person with good qualities is a mani namanadena is very eager to be respectful to others has a humble heart and people without good qualities they think they have good qualities and they become very proud and that arrogance causes them to not be able to appreciate others trinarapi sunichena taror ibasi hishnana amani na manadena kirtaniya sadahari that one should strive to be humble like a blade of grass tolerant like a tree offer all respect to others and expect none in return and in that state of mind one can chant the holy names of the lord constantly <laughs> Ramanujacharya, Gosti Purna, they could explain, they could have explained the logic of this verse the first day to Dasarathi. But you see, even if you have a nutritious meal, if you don't have if you do not have the power to digest it, you won't access the nutrients. And knowledge, spiritual knowledge to actually gain realization and experience of that knowledge the spirit of service to others the spirit of gratitude and the spirit of humility are required for realization so when dasarathi understood this through ramanujacharya and gosti purna's techniques he was ready and then we could actually 